I've been seeing a lot of questions in the comments section regarding the use of antennas and their efficiency when connected to a helium hotspot. In this video, we will use some tools available on the internet and try to understand if an antenna is right for your location, as well as the options available that are compatible with your helium hotspot. We may also quickly indulge in the most recent HNT price chart as HNT recently broke its previous all time highs. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, before we get into anything, I just want to thank you guys for all the uh, all the feedback and the comments um, in the previous videos, especially all of the all of those of you who who liked the videos and subscribed. Uh, it really gives me an idea of what you guys want to see or what you guys are finding useful, um, and gives me an idea of what sort of videos I can uh, how the topics of the videos um, that you guys would find most helpful. Because ultimately, that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to spread some information and. Uh, and grow this uh, grow this network here together. So, before we get into the video, let's take a look at the uh, quick hotspot update. So it looks like we've got twenty four thousand six hundred seventy five hotspots right now. I'm pretty sure the last video was in the high twenty three thousand range. So um, I somewhere around a seven or eight hundred uh, hotspot increase from the last video, which was about a week ago. Um, so I think that's pretty good. Um, all right, so. Back to the, the important stuff in this video. So we're trying to figure out, um, you guys, a lot of you guys were asking uh, if antennas are useful or helpful or if I use one or if I know people who use them. Um, and the answer, and we'll get to all those, uh, answers to all those questions. But the most important thing here, which is uh, what I wanna show you guys is this website here. I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video to this website. Um, well, I don't know if you'd call it a website or a, I guess it'd be a website. It's just a tool on this website um, that is extremely helpful in trying to understand the, uh, the I think it would be called the topography of, of the land that's near you and around you. Um, it's whatever this is, it's called the RF line of sight. Um, and it gives us a really clear and simple and intuitive uh, map of, of, the, of the land around us. So let's take a look. Uh, we're using San Francisco again. Um, and as you can see here, there are two, um, there are two markers. Uh, the blue one, which we can see here, and the green one here. Um, oh, I just moved it and it's gonna update. Um, but as you can see, this map is extremely uh, interactive and it's pretty intuitive. So right now um, we're looking at what the land looks like in between these two uh, in between these two points. And if, and if anyone's familiar with San Francisco, we know it's very hilly. So this is just a good example to show uh, the changes in between two, two points. Of course, where you live is going to be different um, unless you live on San Francisco around here, but of course, wherever everyone lives and wherever they're trying to see if um, they're the hotspots near them, um, how the, the land is in between, it's going to change. Um, but I've put two examples together here so we can get an idea of how to interpret this to see if an antenna would be useful or not. So this blue line here, uh, or this blue marker here, as you can see, is being drawn to this uh, green one, which is a re which is a good distance for two hotspots to be, um, and uh, this is a good distance for two hotspots to be. <clears throat> and as you can see, in between these two points, there is a a huge. Uh, I mean, I guess in San Francisco, there are just these big rolling hills. Um, so this, if you're now, if you're this blue person, uh, if you're this blue hotspot. And you're trying to determine if you should uh, if you should get an antenna, and you're trying to go, I guess it would be east on this map. Um, there's a huge landmass in between these two pieces. So, in my opinion, and this is uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure uh, the exact science behind these antennas, but if there's a huge landmass like this in between two hotspots, I'm not sure that the that getting in antenna is going to give you connection to this other spot here. So as 
the way I understand it is that a these antennas that are sold with these that can be that are sold with these helium hotspots and that are compatible with these helium hotspots are very useful in extending the range. However, it's not going to go through a giant hill or a mountain um, to connect with another hotspot. So if you are this if you're this green marker here, getting a huge um, getting a giant antenna is not really going to make a difference if you're trying to connect with people to the west. Of course, if we move this blue piece over here, um, there it might be this. Well, let's see how it is. So, and this is also a good example because notice that the map does not um, notice how I moved the blue all the way to the right. But in this in this uh, in this diagram here, the blue is actually still on the left. So. This is a good example of if this, and we're, of course, we're looking at this green guy. So the green guy, in the when it's over here, there's a landmass to his, uh, I guess that'd be to the west. But going this direction, he's rather clear to get to these other places. So this is how this map can be used to try and determine if it's, if it's, if, an antenna is going to be successful. And of course, we can see that this landmass is kind of right here. So if you are this person and you're trying to determine if you should get a antenna, I w it's just important to realize that the antenna is probably going to be useful for rain for extending the range everywhere except past this giant landmass. And if to you, if of course we can't determine the amount of earnings that are going to be impacted by hotspots and range in that direction past the mountain, but to you, if it's worth the money and you think that getting this amount of range here is uh, and extending that range with an antenna is going to be helpful then it's uh then it's it, it might it should be worth it um and of course the other nice part about this map is that if we if you i'm going to go back to the way it was so just have a look here so if we are this green guy and right now there's this giant land mass in between us but now let's say you, this green piece is a building right and let's say it's a 40-story building or i mean i don't think those are I'm not awfully familiar with San Francisco, but I don't think there are any 40-story buildings in this area. But for, just to get you an idea, this map is very intuitive, and you can actually, so if you do live in a building or in an apartment at the top of an apartment building, um, you can sort of estimate how high off the ground you are. Of course, this is in meters. You'll just have to convert it to feet. You could go over to Google and just meters to feet and figure out how high you are. But this is super helpful because if you are in a build, a big building, you can, uh, oh, and it also looks like if there's a clear line of sight, um, this highlights in green rather than red. So if you get to a certain height and you're in a building the and this line turns green, that means there's a clear line of sight around you and it's going to be, um, and you're, there's a clear line of sight. So the antenna would actually, in this case, even though it's in the same spot, you're 72 meters higher however many feet that is or, or whatever measurement you're using, um, it's going to be worth it to get a antenna because you're going to reach people and you're you're going to reach far more people and they're all going to be in your line of sight. Um, now, of course, I think if we move this, it'll stay at 72 meters. No, it doesn't. But let's do this and go back to 72 because if this guy's actually still at 72, it just makes your line of sight even better. Um, so if you guys are in apartments or in buildings and um, you're high up, you should calculate how high you are in meters, I guess, for this website and try and understand if it's worth uh, getting an antenna for you. Um, now, I had another example here. This is just a guy that's like on a hill. He, even on the ground, has a clear lane of sight to this other one, um, also in San Francisco. But you could just see how it changes based on where you are. And you could do this anywhere in the world. Um, and don't forget, uh, even if you're, let's say, even if you're on the fourth floor of a building, put however met meters that is, I don't know, maybe 20. Um, and it'll show you um, where the where your location is once you're once you're elevated. Now, the other question is, how do we know which uh, antennas are compatible or which ones are useful? Now, the way I approach this um, is the way I approach other things. I like to buy things that are sold by the same people, um, so I know that they're compatible. And if I have a question with something um, regarding the two pieces. I know that I can call one person and they'll be familiar or contact this company and know that they'll be familiar with these, um, with all the products that I'm trying to work with. 
So this is, uh, I'll put a link to this website in the description. Um, it's one of the original hotspot, uh, helium hotspot miners, which is this rack. This is the one I ordered. Um, and uh, I really, uh, one of the main reasons I chose the rack hotspot miner was because it came with all of this, all of these accessories and these antennas and stuff like that, because it's getting sold from the same people. They're all, as you can see here, helium accessories. They're all helium compatible and they're built to do this. So I wouldn't go buy other antennas and plug them into a hotspot miner and just hope that it's working. Um, I like these because you know that it's built with them. And now the next question is, of course, you're looking at this and say, well, what is, what does this stuff mean? Now I'm not very technical with this stuff, but I did do some research on the uh, this DBI rating, uh, and effectively, the higher the DBI rating, um, the higher the the stronger the antenna is. So obviously, you see here there's a 5.8 DBI, and you see here there are two uh, 8 DBI fiberglass antennas. Um, it's up to you. I, I don't know how we would be able to actually calculate the difference between a 5.8 and an 8, but um, but it might be, it's probably worth it if you're gonna get the antenna to just get the 8 dBi um, as it is more powerful and you're already going through the effort of installing it and stuff like that. So um, I myself ordered the 8 dBi. Um, and now the last question obviously here is, you see it's, it, there's, a, there's a little note here. It's this one supports the, those megahertz and this one supports 900 to 930 megahertz. Depending where lo the location you're in is going to drive which one of these you need. I did a quick, I'm in the United States, so I did a quick search on the megahertz that is compatible with the United States. Um, and it looks like, uh, it looks like 902 to 928 megahertz is what's compatible with the United States, Canada, and South America. Um, which would be this antenna. Um, now, of course, if you need um, if you need any of these other accessories, they're available here, which is also really nice because you know that they're gonna work together um, as long as you read the descriptions here. They do say a few things about what connects to what, but the nice thing is it's all here. Um, of course, there's some feeder line, a mounting kit, um, whatever you might need is all here. I'm gonna do some more videos and try to really understand um, exactly what you need for all of this stuff but this is a great place to start uh, it shows you everything you can read the descriptions and, and make sure you're getting the right stuff that's compatible with uh, with where you're located it would be terrible if somebody in the U.S. for example bought one of these and it wasn't compatible um, but it's just great that everything's right here and you know that it's going to be compatible with this hotspot miner that's like I said that's the reason why I got mine from here um, now uh, and that's really that's really the that's really what I wanted to show you guys. I think it's I think that this tool, this RF line of sight tool, is extremely helpful. Now, of course, it's extremely helpful if you're in a. The biggest thing is you don't want to go spend a bunch of money on an antenna if you are in a valley, let's say, um, and you're not going to get any increased range because you're just there's all land around you. In which case, it's probably not worth it to get an antenna but the hotspot is good because you'll be able to, you'll be able to work with the, the other hotspots in that valley or that are in your line of sight. Uh, and don't forget to use this, uh, this elevation here. It's extremely helpful. Um, and again, I'll put links to this RF line of sight as well as this, uh, this website in the description. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Um, I'll be happy. I'm going to be doing some research on this stuff. So if you have any questions, you want me to research anything, just, put it in the comments below. And again, I just wanted to thank everyone for uh, the feedback from previous videos and uh, for, for liking and commenting and subscribing. Um, and if you haven't, please, I'd really appreciate um, for you guys to like the video and subscribe. Uh, it'll give me a good gauge of uh, if you guys are liking this kind of stuff or if uh, there's other stuff I could touch on. Thanks guys, I will see you next video.